with three cases that make you think uh, sometimes that uh, you don't, you're not quite sure if the Supreme Court is actually running a court or you know the line, the TV lineup for a major. Take a step back to explain what I mean. Uh, an effects test is essentially says even if you have completely neutral motives, never consider race. If you get a test or if you have a high school diploma requirement that has a disproportionate impact on African Americans or Hispanics, that's illegal under Title VII. And there's a similar provisions in the Voting Rights Act that says if you have a discriminatory result in your election schemes, that's illegal even if you had no uh, intent to disadvantage minority. The basic point I think that, that the media tends to miss and, and scholars tend to miss is they think that uh, both the intent test, you can't discriminate intentionally on the basis of race, and the effects test are just two different ways of rooting out discrimination. Uh, the effects test being a more muscular version of an anti-discrimination principle. In reality, the effects test is a mandate for discrimination against non-minorities. Ritchie was the most obvious example of, of the dispute there because, again, engage in sort of a classic thing that public employers do all the time. Gee, our numbers don't look right. We haven't met our, our goal, our quota, so we're just going to scrap the test and, and start all over again. And when the court grappled with this issue, they had sort of two <coughs> polar opposite uh, rationales in front of them. The firefighters were arguing, look, no matter how bad the impact, no matter how unjustified what the employers do, it's never a justification for intentionally discriminating against Mr. Ritchie and these other Hispanic firefighters um, just because you want to avoid an impact test. And the court said no, there are certain circumstances that you can do it. The Justice Department and the dissenters said, oh, if the employers want to do it, let them do it. We'll just call it good faith belief, and it's a meaningless test. And the court quite rightly said, per Justice Kennedy, that's in essence a de facto quota requirement. They've understood that this is, these effects tests are a de facto quota requirement. So they came up with this middle ground, which they've used in the constitutional affirmative action cases, which is do you have a substantial basis in evidence, strong basis in evidence for thinking that your disparate impact is illegal? If you do, then you can engage in race conscious efforts to, quote, cure the problem. How do you rate the recent uh, Supreme Court session, and are, were there any uh, cases that were particularly important or decisive? Boy, there were a number of cases that were uh, particularly important. Uh, I rate it a mix because I did think, as I indicated at this panel, that there were several times when they acted sort of politically, either for, re for results sometimes that I liked, sometimes for results I didn't like, but where they acted politically rather than just sticking to the law and that sort of bothered me. Uh, a huge case, obviously everybody knows about the Ritchie firefighters case. This panel talked a lot about the Northwest Austin Municipal District case, uh, which was a voting rights case. And, uh, and I'm glad to see it get so much attention because I actually think that that is, is, could have been, should have been one of the landmark cases of the last couple of decades. With regard to uh, Sonia Sotomayor, uh, probably going to get confirmed here next week, uh, what do you see for the court in the future? Nothing very good, unfortunately. Uh, I, ha I happen to think from a very, very lengthy, very close examination of her record, I think she's the single most radical uh, nominee maybe in the court's history, certainly in, in my living memory, uh, and probably twice my living memory. Uh, and so I think she's going she's gonna to try to push the court further to the left. And, uh, and I don't know what that's going to do to Anthony Kennedy, the man in the middle. I don't know whether he'll react against that or whether he'll let himself be pulled along. But it's sort of scary either way.